What's going on, ladies? And welcome again to Heart Talks, where we discuss topics specific to women. Yes, ladies, here in this podcast, we aim to get you motivated and elevated. Thanks for joining us. God bless. Welcome today to Heart Talks. We have a very nice treat today, which is a person who is a wonderful contributor to our education system. We've been talking about influence ladies, and today we're going to welcome a wonderful contributor to uh, help us understand what we need to do to support our children with special needs. But first, I wanted to tell you all to um, also check out the channel on YouTube, Google Podcast, and Spotify Podcast. Also, if you're on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much. And without further ado, we would like to welcome Mrs. Sylvia A. to the show. Welcome, Sylvia. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for the opportunity for me to share um, with the ladies on what they can do to support their children with special needs or any um, young children coming up. Well, okay, first of all, let's get into this. Um, and I want to ask you uh, right off, tell us how you became involved in teaching and instructing children with special needs. Well, I started in 1987 uh, working with adults with special needs. And I did that until 2004. And in 2004, I went, I moved from working with adults to um, working in a middle school with, well, we had children from kindergarten to sixth grade. So um, those kids had psychiatric needs and they also had some special needs disabilities. So we call those children dual diagnosis kids. And that's where I started working with children, which I really enjoyed. And um, it was a lot of hard work, but I really enjoyed it. From um, 2004 uh, to 2007, that's when I worked with those children. In 2007, I started working with the children that are in pre-K. And in pre-K, we um, children that start we start children at three years old, from three years old to five year old, mm. five year olds. Okay. So um, that's what I'm doing now, and I ha- I love it, and I really enjoy supporting children with special needs. Wonderful. So Sylvia, what do you find most challenging in the field? If you if um you would mind telling us. Well. For- for me, uh, the most challenging thing in the field is um, not so much with the children because we do understand that they do have special needs, but the most challenging thing is um, with parents and trying to help support parents who have kids with special needs because a lot of times the parents don't want to accept the fact that their children are not typical kids. Okay. And... Um, they just want to, they feel like if they just baby them more or give them what they want more, then everything will be okay. But children with special needs can um, learn as well as children that do not have special needs. But we sometimes have to give them more support. We have to give them routines and routines are things that children learn if you do them over and over and over. And that's what children with special needs need. They need that structure. Wow. So when we give them that structure that they need, then we don't see as much acting out and we can really um, give them the tools that they need to progress. And I think a lot of parents feel like since I have a child with special needs, then I have to spoil them or I have to give them what they want. If they show out, then mm-hmm. if I give them what they want, that pacifies them. But then they that's training them to um, display that behavior of acting out because they get whatever they want every time they act out. And that's training the child to act out every time. Okay, to continue so, acting to continue out. To continue wow. acting out because they know 
that they're going to get what they want. So I think it's more of us giving the parents the tools that they need to work with that child. So um, that's one of the things that I enjoy doing, giving the parents the knowledge that they need to um, help support their child at home. Wonderful. Wow. And what do you find most rewarding, Miss Sylvia, in this field? Uh, well, I the most rewarding thing for me is when I see the progress in a child. Okay. Because uh, a lot of times we'll come, have a child to come in that may have some um, behavioral disorders and they may be... Uh, having tantrums every day. And when we put um, a program in place for them to um, learn a different way to mm -hmm. get what they want, like teaching them tools, giving them that foundation to um, learn how to ask for things, how to use their words. If they can't use their words if, or if they don't talk, we try to give them sign language oh. that they can use to show us what they want or even gestures that they can use. Because a lot of times um, children with special needs, th they act out because they have no other way to communicate. Okay. So if sometimes we have little pictures that they can give us to show us what they want, and when we give that them that communication ability, then that cuts down on the tantrums. So when I see a child progress, like they may come in to um, the school system at three years old and don't have those skills by the time they go to kindergarten, or even if it's a um, special needs kindergarten, they have grown a good bit. So... Um, that's a reward. And to see the parents um, just be able to handle the child at home when they couldn't before. So that's very re rewarding to me. Wonderful. Wow. What an interesting field. Um, what do you see as being your contribution or how have you positively impacted the children? You've been talking about influence a lot on this podcast and how we as women impact our society. And so for yourself personally, what do you see as being your contribution uh, or what in your personality or your mindset uh, or your way of doing things helps you to positively impact the children? Well, as for myself, I, it's, it took me a long time to uh, come to the point. You know, sometimes we, you go through life and you, you know that the Lord has put you on the earth for a reason. Yes. And people are always saying, oh, this is my calling. You know, Christians will say, oh, well, I feel the Lord calling me to do this. And I call the Lord. I hear the Lord calling me to do that. And this is my gift and I'm walking in my gift. And, and it took me a long time to really get to the point to understand what my gift was. Okay. I um and sometimes you don't even think of things in your personality that are gifts. And I have always been a good listener and I have always been a person person of patience. And um those two things have really helped me to see that God has given me those gifts to use in the field of education because working with special needs kids, you have to have patience. It's, it's no way that you can really help and support another child. If you don't have the patience to see what's going on with them. So, and also not just support the um, children, but to support a teacher because what I'm doing now in the school system is that I go um, around the county and I support teachers who have children who um, need extra support in special needs. So I may go to one school um, for a period of time to help the teacher with a student who may have um, a visual disability. And I may stay there and make um, make some activities for visually 
visual needs kids, or I may work with a kid who um, needs some sign language mm-hmm. material. So um, I'll make that material for the for the teacher, and that gives the teacher more tools that she can use in the classroom with that child. So I may stay to the school for the whole year, or I may, you know, have to move on to a different school. And it just depends, but I can um, adapt. So I go in, I listen to the teacher and see what they need, see what support they need for the child. And then I see how the child is operating. And I have that patience to, you know, work with the child and to help support the teacher as well. So I think that um, that has been my gift of being patient and to be a support to teachers because everybody can't go into a situation in a classroom with a teacher and change and let that teacher um, let tell them what they need and then be able to support them and then move on to another teacher and change your whole outlook on how that another teacher may operate. So I think the Lord has really blessed me with those tools and I'm really thankful for that. Wow. That's a wonderful, just a wonderful um, history of working with these children. Um, Have you seen improvements in this field? I mean, uh, in the approach towards the children? Have you seen through the years you've been working in this field for several years have you seen any revamping um, or changing in the way that uh, the staff approach dealing with the children? Or has it been pretty much the same uh, methods used to deal with the children? Oh, well, when I first started, like uh, back in 1987, uh, working with adults with special needs, they were mostly institutionalized. So, um, then they moved from having, um, those with special needs institutionalized to putting them in group homes into the community. So, um, from that point, um, I have seen the school system just try their best to, uh, include special needs kids in the cl- everyday classroom and in activities. So it's been a huge, a huge change wow. in how um, we in society look at kids with special needs. So that's been a huge positive in the area of special needs. When you say institutionalized, do you mean they, uh, were they like locked away from everyone? Or can you go in more detail about that were they all living one place together? Well, as or? adults, as adults, um, they they did have uh, institutional um, facilities for adults with special needs, and a lot of the kids did stay at home with parents. So a lot of parents didn't even let their kids come to um, school. So wow. um, it has changed a great, great, a great bit, which is wonderful because. As soon as that child is able to get support, like in uh, the school system that I work in, as soon as the child uh, is is um, sent for evaluation, like a lot of kids are go to daycare, and their daycare teacher may say, "Well, um, your child needs some more support in." Um, how they are processing. We see something here that's not typical. So um, they will send a referral to um, the county that I work in, and they will be the child will be seen by an assessment team. And then the assessment team will do some tests, and um, then they will recommend the child for what level of support that's needed. And um, it it's amazing is how that support is so important for the child and um it's just a wonderful thing to see wow so what um i remember when we were growing up uh, back in the 80s 70s the approach to special needs i remember children with special needs being placed together in one class 
and all being labeled with the same, you know, name, word. They called them all one word. And um, do you see a big difference now in the way a special needs um, student is approached for education, to be educated? Um, what I mean is they used to put them all in one room together and they didn't, I guess, diagnose the children and, you know, separate them into different groups? Well, you are absolutely right. And, um, you know, now by law, uh, special needs children are, well, the state is required to provide um, the same educational needs that they do for regular ed kids, especially and with special ed children. Uh, it may be modified so that they can understand it better, but um, we do have in our school system special ed children that are inclusive with regular ed children. Wow. So uh, the lessons are modified so that they can understand it better, but they're still in the same classroom. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. So we do have... Um, some classroom, especially in um, in pre-K, where the classes are um, self-contained, that means uh, you may have uh, autist autistic kids are in one classroom, but we do they do the same thing as in a regular pre-K okay. classroom, but it's just modified for them. Okay. And um, I guess that would give... The but they children. have the same standards that mm -hmm. for um, regular ed pre-K classrooms. Okay. The standards are the same. It's just modified. By them putting some of the children in the same class, uh, the children with special needs with the um, children without, I guess that would provide those with special needs more um, a sense of belonging do you think they do have a a sense of belonging but little kids are just they are um the way that they don't view themselves as different okay so um most of our little kids when they are we do have some classes what that we call co-teach classes and they do have um Half kids are typical and half kids are special needs. So um, they do all the activities, um, sing songs together. They um, go outside to PE together, eat lunch together. But when it comes to instruction, the kids that are in um, special needs, uh, they they have their work simplified. They're all in the same classroom, but and they have two separate teachers. They have a special ed teacher and they have a regular ed teacher in the same classroom so that is one model that we do have in our school system wow so that works perfectly for some kids um but we do sometimes have um kids that need more support than that and those kids may be in a class just by themselves where they get the support that they need so that they can be successful in school wonderful it's quite inspiring. What uh, would you say, if you could think of it, what would be your most heartwarming experience with a child that you have worked with personally? Well, I think the, my most heartwarming um, experience has been with a little boy who was, um, he was in a wheelchair and his parents didn't really want him to come to school. They were very, very, very um, protective and very cautious because of his medical needs. Mm -hmm. And we all understood that. But um, they allowed him to come, which was a wonderful thing. And um, he had uh, what they call a Mobius syndrome. And that... With the syndrome that he had, he could not speak, but his cognitive level was where he could understand everything that was being said. Mm -hmm. um, and he did go to speech therapy, so he could make sounds and he could let you know what he wanted. Um, 
but his he didn't have the ability to um his facial expressions you couldn't tell because his face was paralyzed because of the syndrome so um and then he had swallowing issues so uh we understood why his parents really you know was apprehensive mm -hmm. about letting him come to school but it was very very good for him when he first came um he he could not feed himself uh and he had to be pushed around everywhere mm -hmm. in the wheelchair. Um, but by the time he left, he came when he had just turned three. School started in um, in, in August. And he had just turned three in July. So, you know, that was very hard for parents to let their baby mm -hmm. with all these medical needs mm -hmm. come to school. But um, when he came... He and I worked well together, and by the time he left, he could he end up getting a motorized wheelchair, and it took a lot of training and working with him on the wheelchair, a lot of running into walls and backing up, and but he could learn. He learned how to maneuver the wheelchair, and he learned how to feed himself. He learned how to use his um device that he would use to um talk to us so um it was just and his parents were just very very happy with the progress because they said they never thought that he would ever feed himself wow what an improvement so um it it was took a lot of patience took a lot of time but he gained those skills and the more skills that he gained the more confident that he became that he could do things. And at first he didn't like to try to do anything. But once he saw that he could do it, mm -hmm. then he was more excited mm -hmm. to try something new. So it was really, really exciting to see and satisfying. Wow. And I really appreciate that the Lord allowed me that opportunity to work with him. Because at first I was pretty nervous. Mm hmm because he had, you know, a good bit of medical needs, but by the end of it, just working with the family, and he has a wonderful family, mm -hmm. and he has a mom that really fights for him and fights for his rights. So um, fantastic! Wow. It was really, really a wonderful and um, just an experience that I treasure and will always remember. Wow! Thank you for that. Well, and our final question today is, um, I wanted to ask you to talk a little bit about how has your faith helped you uh, working in this field with the children? Um, you know, do you use prayer and what, you know, how has it, it helped you, you know, grow in faith or, or helped you to make it through difficult situations faced working in the system and and also working with certain children or parents um how would you say your faith has helped you well i would say that my faith has helped me every day because every day before i go well on my way to school every day i ask the lord to help me to uh, hear what I need to hear and to see what I need to see to help this child to become what he has created them to be. Wow. And, um, and to help me to support the parents and the teachers with the abilities that he's given me. And um, he has done that. He has done that, and I'm so very thankful because um, we see a lot of kids come into the, our program with a lot of a lot of different needs, mm -hmm. with a lot of different backgrounds, mm. and some of them are not happy backgrounds. Okay, some of them are very tough. Some of them are difficult and heartbreaking. Mm. So, but. You still have to have that mindset of not focusing on where they came from, but 
try to take them where they need to go. Hey. Because sometimes that kid might uh, throw things at you. Mm -hmm. They might cuss you out. And it's hard to hear somebody four years old, mm -hmm. three years old, cursing, cursing you, out. you out and not have an attitude about it. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> 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 just gonna be, I'm just going to be real about it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to hear a three or four year old call you out your name. Wow. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> you, how old are you? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, they learn that mm -hmm. behavior from somewhere. Mm -hmm. They heard somebody saying this, mm -hmm. but they're at school. And they, can, and they can't even say their ABCs. Oh, wow. But, but they out. can curse you out, you know, and so you have to separate yourself and say, this is not directed at me. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to ignore that behavior to teach you a new way of learning, to teach you something new, to teach you those foundational skills you need so that you can be successful? Wow. You know, so you have to be. Praying that, Lord, please help me not to react. <laughs> help me, you know, to do what I need to do to help this child. And help me not to hold it against them. Because it's going to be more than one day mm -hmm. that this child might curse you out, bite you, kick you, wow. slap you, pull your hair. And you can't be in your feelings. And, you can't, <laughs> and I mean, they teach you the skills that you need, mm -hmm. you know, to handle the behaviors but still, you have feelings as mm -hmm. a person, you know? Or sometimes you may go into a classroom where there's a teacher that has a certain way that she wants things done. And she, where my job, I go into classrooms a lot of times as an additional person. Most of the time, I am an additional person that they have a difficulty with a child and I'm called in to go into the class to help. And this teacher already has how she wants things done. But I'm supposed to go in to give her support. So sometimes they don't want to listen mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to what I'm suggesting. Mm -hmm. So that's another kind of dynamic that you have to adjust to. So I have to use prayer mm -hmm. because the Lord has to give me wisdom and give me understanding on how can I help this child in spite of the teacher wanting things done a certain way. How am I to help this child and not cause a conflict in the classroom? Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, I have to pray myself through some things. Because sometimes it's a teacher that may say, well, I want it done this way. But it may not be the best thing to support this child. Because sometimes... You know, people have an ego. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's not about your ego. It's about what's best for the child. And I'm here to support the child. Mm -hmm. Although I'm here to support the classroom mm -hmm. in general, but my main focus is how do we get this child on track? What skills can we give this child to um, help them to learn what they need to learn so they'll be able to move on. So, I use prayer every day. Wow. <laughs> every bet. day. Yeah. Every day. And sometimes it's not the student and it's not the teacher, but it comes the parent. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have parents that do not want to face those facts that they have a special needs child. Because most mommies, you don't expect, you you when you're pregnant, you expect to have a normal child. Mm -hmm. Daddies expect to have a, a son that they could go out and play, you know, basketball with, play football with, mm -hmm. throw the ball with, you know. And when they don't have that child, sometimes... It's a lot of anger in there. Really? And we do have a lot of parents, especially fathers, who can't, they'll think, well, my child's going to grow out of it. Mm -hmm. You know, give them some time. I used to do that when I was a kid, but I grew out of it. 
Sometimes they don't grow out of it. Okay. Sometimes they have that disability, that cognitive disability or that social, social disability, emotional disability, you know, gross motor, fine motor disability. And when the parents don't want to accept that fact about their child and you're trying to give them the tools that they need as parents, Mm -hmm. say, why don't you try this at home? Why don't you try that at home? And they don't want to. They are thinking, no, I'm not because I don't want that label to be on my child. Okay. So you have to pray about those things Mm -hmm. and just ask the Lord to give you wisdom on how you can suggest things to parents so that they can help their child. Would you say that that's a sense of uh, denial from the parents sometimes? Sometimes it is a sense of denial. Okay. They don't want to accept that fact that their child is not typical. I see. And just because a child is not typical doesn't mean that they can't learn Mm -hmm. and that they can't have a good life. Because those children can learn. Because some of them, it may take a lot longer for them to learn. But they can learn. But they can learn. Wow. Because they have learned how to cuss you out. (laughs) So they can learn. (laughs) So they can learn if you show them the right things Mm -hmm. and take the time. Sometimes you have to repeat it over and over and over and over again. But you have to have that patience Mm -hmm. and not let what you see in front of you, you know, be the snapshot of the end of their life because it's not okay because how a person begins typical or atypical how you begin is not the how you're going to end so I have to look at how can I help this child to become what the best they can between the ages of three and five okay Try to give them those foundational skills that we can, the most we can, so they can move on and be successful. Oh, wow. So, what a uh, wonderful outlook that you have. Um, just a positive approach to this whole uh, field and um, mission. Would you say it's a mission for your life? I think that it it has been a mission for my life. It ha- like when I first started in the field, I didn't realize how much it was a mission for me. And now that I am in a position where I travel around to so many different classrooms mm-hmm. um, and I get to work with so many different teachers and children, I get to pass on what I learned from one classroom. I may pick up something that a teacher is doing. And I then I said, that's a good idea. And I, you know, I said, you know what? Let me pack that idea and then I'll take it to another classroom. And then if the situation arises, I'll say, hey, you know, I saw a teacher over here doing this with a child. Mm-hmm. Um, you might want to try it. Let's try it and see what happens. And sometimes you try it and it it works. Sometimes you try it and it doesn't. Sometimes you try it and it works for two days. Sometimes it works for 20 minutes, <laughs> but you keep trying different things okay. that, you know, that will um, try to give those, put those tools in there. And sometimes it seems like we will never overcome this issue that this child is having. But after a while, if you keep at it and mm-hmm. keep at it and keep the routine, keep the structure and just add little, a little bit at a time you'll start seeing little victories. Okay. And when you see a little victory and a little change, then you say, hey, okay, we're on the <laughs> road. That victory could last for 20 minutes. <laughs> but it is a victory mm-hmm. because it's 20 minutes more than you had the first day they started. So that's progress. Oh, Wow. So when we see the victory, you know, we when we see that little 20 minute victory <laughs> of that child who used to curse you out, but now they call you, hey, Miss S or hey, Miss A, mm-hmm. instead of hey, mm-hmm. blankety blank, blank. Mm-hmm. 
That's a victory. It's a victory. That's a victory. Wow. Then we have to do our happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but. So thank you so much for joining us today, Sylvia. And uh, we really appreciate, appreciate your contributions to our children. Um, I want to say that we want to wish you continued success and blessings in the field of training and educating of uh, our children with special needs. Um, thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. And I pray that uh, your podcast will continue to help women out there. And I pray that this podcast will help uh, women out there with their children with special needs. And um, Amen. just remember, moms are educators or anyone working with special needs kids that... Um, Everything in life is a process, and God has put those children in your lives for a reason, and there are teachers and educators out there to assist you, but we need for you to invest in educating yourself as well. There are many books, there are many resources, there are many groups that are out there to give you the support that you need. You're not here alone. So um, just reach out. Make sure you reach out. And um, God bless you and thank you for your time. Thank you, ladies, for joining us again on Hard Talks. And we just had a great discussion today with Sylvia A. from the school system and special needs children. And all of you, hope you had a great week. God bless you as you go into your new week. And um, peace, love, and hearts of women, we do talk. What's going on, ladies? And welcome again to Heart Talks, where we discuss topics specific to women. Yes, ladies, here in this podcast, we aim to get you motivated and elevated. Thanks for joining us. God bless.